a strange cult, a triangle-shaped porthole to an evil realm, and the all-seeing eye. This is a Fringianity movie trailer analysis. What is your opinion of the world today? What does this Bible have to say? Fringianity. Welcome to the show. Now before I start the show, I just want to point out a few things. This show is a show that talks about fringe topics with a Christian point of view. So if that offends you, please turn it off now and you don't have to be offended. Okay, so The Void. It's a newer film. I guess it was made a, a year or so ago. Uh, it's a small budget film. It's not exactly playing everywhere either. But I just wanted to analyze this film because at least what I know about it I didn't see it so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna probably end up seeing it anyway because it looks like it's too gory for me but my point is to do kind of a um, analysis of this movie because it has some elements that I seen in the commercial and in the poster that draw me into it because it had a lot of uh, very real-world occult type of stuff that I seen and of course, there is, you know, as always, the all-seeing eye with the pyramid type of thing. And all these occult people have the hole in their hoodie is basically in the shape of the pyramid, which is very ironic. Now, a lot of people would call that the Illuminati, whatever. It's, I'm just saying, if you look at our money on the back of a dollar bill, you're going to see the symbol that so many of these cult leaders seem to be showing. And that seem, symbol seems to pop up a whole lot. But for most of the world, oh, that's just coincidence. Why? What, what makes that a coincidence if it's there so many times so much? Now, I know some people will say, the Illuminati, that's a crazy thing to talk. You can't say that. That's, that's insane. There is no such thing as a cult a group of people who want to rule the world that have uh, evil intentions that actually all are in agreement, or in for the most part in agreement, that they want to dominate. And they're in this secret group, because they're not telling everybody all their secrets, right? So therefore, it's a secret society with a symbol. And the symbol is everywhere, the all-seeing eye. And they put it everywhere so that people are not thinking, oh, it's a big conspiracy, you know? They put it right out in your face so that you're kind of used to it now. So that when they do come out, it's going to be like, oh, whatever, you know. I'm going to read the info on this movie uh, and then I'll kind of get into my thoughts on some of the stuff from the trailer and all that. Okay. When police officer Carter discovers a blood-soaked man limping down a deserted road, he rushes him to a local hospital with a bare bones night shift staff. As cloaked cult-like figures surround the building, the patients and staff inside start to turn ravenously insane. Trying to protect the survivors, Carter leads them into the depths of the hospital where they discover a gateway to immense evil. So that's the description of the movie. The movie tagline is there is a hell. This is worse. So I don't know what they're entailing there by saying that. I'm guessing on the other side of this porthole, uh, it's basically worse than hell. I don't know how what could be worse than hell. I mean, hell is pretty bad. It's eternal. You don't get out of that. It's forever suffering. What could be worse than forever suffering? So, anyway, the movie has a very 80s kind of uh, creepy horror movie vibe. Uh, it's very gory. Uh, from what I could see in the commercials, it's like disgusting, gory stuff. It's practical effects, I guess. So it's probably going to be something like a Hellraiser movie or something from those that period of sc scary movies. And before I was a Christian, I used to actually watch those Hellraiser movies, believe it or not. Uh, and those movies are really disgusting and just, ugh, you can't take it. I think it was, I don't know which one it was I saw. But I remember I went to see it 
and the person I was with was like, can we just go now? This is disgusting. This is horrible. And I stayed through it, not because of the movie was so great. I thought the movie was kind of like just basic, okay. Uh, but because the movie, because I paid for the movie and I don't like to leave something that I pay for, you know, and it's not the movie theater's fault that the movie was so bad. So, whatever. That's just my stupid logic when I was younger. <laughs> but the movie, this movie seems to be a lot more aimed, like, in the... It's kind of the same kind of themes or look as, like, the old Halloween 3 season of the witch movie. A lot of people didn't like that movie. and Well, I'm, I'm not saying I like any of these movies, actually. But Halloween 3 season of the witch... Uh, was actually actually more scary to me than the actual Halloween movies were when I was younger because Halloween 3 had a cult this old-fashioned like pagan cult type of thing behind these masks that kids put on and the the scary part was these kids are gonna put on these masks and they're gonna just turn into like little demons and it's gonna seal onto their face and they can't get it off and the whole world is gonna be like overrun by kids with these masks and they're going to be like demonic and this one man who owns this random factory in the middle of no nowhere the shamrock whatever mask factory in the middle of nowhere has like robots and like zombie type of people working for it's just creepy that movie was really creepy to me and if they remade that nowadays i think it would be like a nightmare uh so that it's, that's kind of what this this commercial and this movie kind of reminds me of. It has that same kind of creepy, I don't know, that season of the witch Halloween 3 kind of vibe to me. And also it has like some phantasm. I mean, this is obviously showing off the kind of movies I used to watch. But when I was growing up, me and my dad uh, watched the, this movie called Phantasm. I'm sure a lot of people have probably seen it, but... And I'm not promoting these movies, okay? This is what I seen when I was not a Christian, okay? So I can't unremember these things because suddenly I became a Christian, so I'm suddenly going to just never remember these things. Being a Christian means you need Christ because you're not perfect. You need salvation, right? So I'm not perfect. I don't expect anybody to be perfect. And if you're a Christian and you say you're perfect, you're lying, which is not going to get you into heaven. So anyway... The Phantasm movie, that was another 70s film, and that has basically the same kind of vibe where there's a kid and his brother and something goes wrong and there's this uh, creepy place that they end up going to and it's always this creepy stuff going on in the basement of these uh, places. And there's always and Phantasm had a porthole. That's the reason why this reminds me of that. Phantasm had this porthole in the basement of this... Uh, graveyard building basically uh and they end up going there and you see this porthole and you can't see the porthole but when you go through it you can definitely tell where, that you're in a different dimension or whatever you're basically in hell and basically they crush everyone down into like this small little little people that's dead and they become like servants to this old man who owns the the um, funeral home it's weird stuff. I'm sure some people out there might remember that, but that's what this kind of reminds me of. This film kind of has that same kind of feel as Phantasm or Halloween 3, Season of the Witch type of stuff. And it even has a little bit of a um, feeling of uh, Stranger Things from what I could see in the commercials. And like I said, I'm not going to watch this movie. It's too gory. It's too gross. I don't see any anything spiritually good about it. So as a Christian, the Bible says to expose the works of darkness. So that's what I'm doing. I'm pointing out the things that the world is not going to pick up on probably because they're not aware of it. But there are occult symbols in movies. Whether you believe it or I, don't, I believe it, whatever, it doesn't matter what we believe. The people behind these movies, a lot of people are in Freemasonry. They're in different secret societies. And this knowledge is passed through these secret societies of certain things, like certain symbols. So whenever I see certain symbols, I can go, oh, somebody on the set of that movie or writing it or something 
put something in that movie and they obviously know a little bit more than the average person about what that symbol means, you know, or what they're talking about. Uh, so whenever I see the all-seeing eye, the pyramid thing, you know, a lot of people go off, you know, and say, oh, that's absolutely insane. And they always talk about all these hip-hop artists and all that stuff. They're throwing up, you know, the Illuminati symbol and all this, you know. Yeah, there's that, but I'm not really looking into it like that. I'm saying that there's actual real secret societies. This is a re- There are real secret societies out there. I mean, George W. Bush was in Skull and Bones and admitted to it on the news. He admitted to it, and then, of course, they didn't talk about it. But it's a secret society. That means if he's if the president of the United States at the time was in a secret society, that who's his allegiance to? Do we know? Because he could have a secret allegiance to somebody else. But because he's in a secret society, he can't talk to us, the people, about that. Therefore, that's kind of threatening to our nation and our people, right? Because somebody keeping secrets from their own people that could change laws and do evil things or have an agenda that's not good for us, the people, that's kind of a bad thing, right? So Skull and Bones is, that's a legitimate thing. You can look this stuff up and there's other types of groups out there. Uh, So anyway, my point is this movie has a lot of symbolism. Well, like I said, the all-seeing eye uh, right on the actual one of the posters and the guy is holding his hand out. And you can see, you can see obviously his hand is out and he's got the eye on it. And then everywhere you look in this movie, you see this pyramid shape thing. And it's like spray painted or in blood or whatever coming down the door. And it's really kind of creepy looking. That shows, you know, that this is not a good thing if it's, you know, there's blood or whatever. And they murdered somebody and they made that symbol. It's like Charles Manson crap, you know. This cult, this group of people outside this building in this movie commercial or whatever just look at their their little robes i mean their hoodie is basically the hole in the hoodie is a pyramid and then eventually you see this giant pyramid later in the commercial coming into the clouds i don't know maybe what they're talking about is this is a porthole to communicate with ancient aliens of some kind which the aliens obviously they come in a pyramid i don't know that maybe that's their spaceship i don't know this could be uh, like Stargate, the TV show or the movie or whatever. They had that same kind of theory where it's like pyramids, you know, and they could use that as a spaceship or what. it's just weird. But why is why is it pyramids? Is that because that's on the mind of people right now? Because of the Illuminati, all this symbolism that we see? Why would they choose pyramids for this symbol and everything? Is that a creepy? That's kind of a creepy idea. knowing that in the real world there is cults that use the pyramid as their symbolism what 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 is such a big thing i mean alistair crowley was always about the pyramid in the eye too you might want to look that guy up because he was a satanist he was not a good guy he believed in magic with a k the k was like for killing you know that it was serious like killing children sacrificing people all this stuff Uh, child molestation, all kinds of creepy stuff was around Aleister Crowley. So he's not exactly a good guy. And of course, the Beatles put him on their Sgt. Pepper album cover in the back. You can find that. And a lot of Hollywood movie stars, musicians, all this stuff always looked up to him, which is very weird because if you actually read his books, you would know that he was into uh, violent sex acts, uh, raping women, beating women, uh, doing all kinds of uh, torturous stuff. He believed in sex magic, like the chili peppers, sex magic, you know, I don't know. Maybe this chili peppers got that from him, who knows. But uh, he, they, he believed in this wild, satanic, do-as-thou-will attitude, which was basically the law, the law of that he believed in. You know, the Christians have Ten Commandments? Well, Aleister Crowley had one commandment. Do as thou will. And if you analyze the, that statement, do as thou will. By the way, Jay-Z wears that on, on one of his shirts and clothing, whatever. Do as thou will. 
and he's got Aleister Crowley information all over. It's pretty wild, pretty wild stuff. But that's crazy Illuminati talk now. Even though you could actually see pictures of it and everything, and you're like, well, where, where would he get the exact words, do as thou will? I mean, that's a little too ironic and too close to exactly what Aleister Crowley said to be, con- to be uh, a coincidence, I'll put it that way. But it's not just Jay-Z, so it's, it is a bunch of people out there that are into Aleister Crowley and that type of stuff. Johnny Depp is kind of into that stuff. Marilyn Manson, you know, all that. There's definitely groups out there that are into dark stuff and twisted things. And they're into that symbol of the pyramid in the eye. That all is tied together. That pyramid in the eye has a lot of blood behind it. And a lot of uh, disgusting things behind it. And that's what gets me back to this movie because I'm like looking at this movie and going, oh, this is a cult with the all-seeing eye and the pyramid, really? So you're putting it in my face that there is a cult with the all-seeing eye and they want to kill people. Like the, the tagline says, you know, there is a hell. This is worse. They're into something that's worse than hell. It's not a good thing. So... And obviously, this is one of those movies, you know, it's just a gory, uh, disgusting, you know, zombies and disgusting things coming out of the darkness, kind of H.P. Lovecraft type of stuff, you know. And just looking at the actual cover, you're going, you know, you see this, you know, these like tentacles coming out of this pyramid shaped thing with this guy like basically worshipping at this altar of it, which is, that's the other thing. It's basically these people are worshipping some kind of beast or image or creature on the other side. And I don't understand how they could want to worship something so evil, but maybe they think they get their power from this evil. A lot of secret societies in real, in the real world, a lot of these Satanistic groups or these small Satan groups that say that they worship Satan and the terrible things that they, you find out later after years of torturous things that they did... A lot of them have very similar ties to like what you see in this movie. So this movie reflects a lot of what reality in what's really happening in real life. I don't know about all the zombies and all the twisted stuff and the guts coming to life and stuff coming out of these people and tentacles. But my point is the bare bones of this story has very realistic ties to stuff that's really going on. Real Satanists really do try to open portholes to communicate with demons. Real Satanists really do sacrifice children, uh, molest children, kill children, uh, whatever, drink the blood, whatever, and sacrifice things to open portholes and get more power from Satan. This is what real Satanists do, okay? So this movie is very much tied to what real Satanists are doing. To this day. I mean, it's not like they changed. I mean, there is a form of Satanism out there where they're basically a light light Satanist and they say that they're basically atheists, which I believe that if they're going to say they're an atheist and they don't really believe in Satan, then don't actually call yourself a Satanist. Call yourself an atheist. If you believe in, if you're, if you're an atheist, then be an atheist. I don't know why you have to say you're a Satanist. Just to sound more evil? I don't know. So... My point is, this whole thing is kind of a creepy mess, and I just wanted to point out some of the the symbolisms of secret societies and Satanism that I seen as I was watching this trailer and all that stuff. Um, it's obviously something I'm not going to go to see. It's not something I'm obviously promoting. But I just wanted people to be aware of this because if this movie does well, I'm sure it'll be in more theaters. It's only in select theaters right now. It's one of those small movies that uh, basically had a really small budget but did really well. Uh, So I'm sure that that means that if it does really well, they could probably put it in more theaters. You know how these scary movies are. Uh, Some of these movies, these horror movies, when they do well, more people want to see them and then it'll get promoted, you know. My point is, just be aware of the symbols that you see. Sometimes the things that you see in movies have real-world ties and real-world stuff behind them. And that's what, as a Christian, I notice 
because the Bible tells us not to be deceived. Let no man deceive you. And that's just something that I wanted to talk about. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. God bless.